Hi everyone, my name is Kyle Weaver. As a new Mavic Pro owner, I was pretty excited to learn how to fly the drone and get out there and take some cool aerial footage. My first few videos were a lot of fun to make and you can see them on my YouTube channel. Even though I was pretty particular about learning the capabilities and limitations of the drone, I still fell victim to the new drone owner's worst nightmare, crashing his drone. Fortunately, I opted for the DJI Care Refresh plan, which uh, is basically an insurance program for knuckleheads like me, uh, so that if I get out there and experiment, I don't have to worry so much about crashing the drone uh, and then having to fork out another $1,000 for a new one. So what was the scenario? Uh, it was Sunday morning on Christmas Eve. I went out to Chinatown near downtown LA uh, to get some footage uh, down there. Um, near the Chinatown metro station is a cool area where there's two buildings uh, with some lanterns strung in between. I thought this might be a cool shot. Unfortunately, as you'll see, there was a problem. I did a good look around to make sure that uh, there was room above the lanterns, no obstructions, and fortunately it all looked clear. I decided to use the tripod mode, uh, which slows the movement of the Mavic to a snail's pace. Perfect for great smooth shots, but uh, it could have been a contributing factor to this crash. The shot was looking good until, at some point, the Mavic stopped responding and started a slow drift to the right. I corrected with full left on the right stick. Uh, that stopped the drift and started the Mavic moving uh, slowly to the left side of the courtyard. But now it didn't re seem to re be responding at all. The drone continued its slow left drift until it hit the left wall but despite any inputs uh, from the controller. It was like that Austin Powers movie. Hang on, I'm gonna floor it! Watch out! Move! 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 Careful, Austin! No! So, what happened? First and foremost, user error. Uh, there are some technical reasons that the uh, GPS might have been having some problems. And first one we'll talk about is called the Urban Canyon Phenomena. Uh, and that's where the tall buildings uh, prevent the receiver from seeing the satellites, which are a little bit closer to the horizon. Uh, in this case, uh, there's a tool that Trimble has called the GNSS Planning Tool, uh, the Global Navigation Satellite System Planning Tool, which we'll cover here in a few minutes, uh, where it shows you where the satellites are and what satellites are visible. Uh, in this case, uh, looking at the, uh, the tool, there were 19 satellites available when I was flying. Uh, once we got in between the buildings, we'll see that number come down to uh, uh, as low as 14. Uh, and I think that's because the uh, receiver wasn't able to see the, uh, the satellites. Um, as we'll see in the, the next section, uh, based on the orientation of the building, I was probably able to see some GLONASS and GPS satellites out to the west-northwest and also uh, down to the southeast-southeast. Um, but there were two GPS satellites who were probably high enough to get to, uh, get the direct signal. Uh, and that takes us to our next technical challenge. Uh, it's called multipath interference. Uh, and this is where the, the actual signals from the satellites get caught between the buildings, bounce around a little bit uh, before they actually make it to the receiver. Uh, in this case, it, it would cause a, you know, a few meters uh, additional error or uncertainty of position. Uh, and that, that uh, could be a problem there because the GPS uh, fix uh, is, is uncertain enough that the drone is kind of floating around thinking it gets in the same position or looking for that same position uh, when it just doesn't actually know uh, where it is. So we'll go to uh, the site. I use Safari just because it seems to work with Silverlight. Uh, and do a search for GNSS planning and that's the uh, one right there. GNSS planning Trimble. Okay, when you get to the site, uh, you have buttons along the left side, and these uh, get, you know, allow you to get set up. First, pick your location. It'll bring up a uh, map. You zoom into where you want. Uh, hit apply. I've already done that, and that's uh, the location I want to look at. <clears throat> you can set the height. Cutoff is the altitude or the elevation at which uh, it doesn't show satellites, uh, which means you can't see them when they're near the horizon. So 10 degrees above the horizon. I picked the, the 24th of December, which was the day I was out there, and I was out there between about 10 and noon uh, local time. We'll show a span of six hours. 
uh, and I'm in the Pacific time zone here in Los Angeles. Hit apply and it'll set up uh, the rest of the information here. Okay, For satellite library, uh, you can select the satellite constellations that you want to look at. For the DJI drone in the US, it uh, receives GPS and GLONASS satellites, so we'll check those two and leave the other ones unchecked. Elevation, this shows you how high the satellites, uh, we'll see this in another screen, and the number of satellites that we can see. Uh, at 11 o'clock here, it looks like we're seeing 10 GPS satellites and 9 GLONASS satellites. Those are the ones that are potentially in view, or the ones above 10 degrees cutoff. Dilution of precision is a measure of how uh, the uh, geometry and time uh, of the satellites help. Uh, we won't talk about that one. Uh, visibility shows us what, how many satellites are visible. And then sky plot is the first one we're going to look at to really make this good. <clears throat> Down here in the lower right corner uh, is a slider which lets you select time. So in the settings screen we set 10 o'clock uh, for 6 hours. So Use the uh, arrow keys to move along here. So every 10 minutes, uh, you get an updated position of all the satellites uh, with respect to the receiver. So the crash happened right around 11. Uh, so this is a scene we saw uh, at 11. As you can see, there's uh, two satellites that are above the 60 degree circle. This is 30 degrees, and this is our set cutoff at 10 degrees. Uh, the, <clears throat> the buildings are oriented west-northwest to east-southeast, so something like this. Uh, so I estimate based on the, the number of stories and the altitude I was flying, I probably didn't have the ability to see much beyond about 60 degrees. Um, so technically the only two satellites I probably saw were these two. However, because of the way the or buildings were oriented, I could see these, and I might be able to see these back here, and we'll see that on the next screen as well. If you go to world view, this is kind of a cool one. Uh, again, I'll run the uh, time back to 10 o'clock and go 10, every 10 minutes. You can see the uh, satellites, where they come in view, what their path will be, and where they are on that path. Um, so that's 11.30. I'll go back to 11. Uh, so you can see here, uh, with the buildings the way they were, I probably saw this group of buildings over the Pacific, uh, maybe these out over the Caribbean, and the two that are uh, near overhead, uh, the two GPS satellites there. All right. So that's GNSS planning. Uh, you can look at any time, so if you uh, pick a time in the future and you want to see what the satellites look like uh, based on your position, uh, you can do that. So what could I have done to prevent this? First of all, don't fly in an urban canyon. Uh, second, I probably could have been a little bit lower to allow the uh, position keeping sensors, the opti sensors, which are the front and lower facing visual sensors, uh, to allow them to do their job of uh, visual p uh, position keeping. As it was, I was a little too high, they were probably out of range. Uh, so as the GPS signal degraded, it started to go use the, the barometric altitude to help with the position keeping and some other stuff. And I doubt that this was enough to keep the uh, the uh, drone where it needed to be. Uh, I'm still not sure quite why it didn't respond to my control inputs. Uh, my only guess is that since I was in tripod mode uh, and the gains are uh, brought down quite a bit to prevent quick movements of the uh, drone, uh, that as the, the drone started to move and uh, I just didn't have enough gain to stop it, uh, that's the only thing I can think of there. So let's talk about the position keeping modes. There's GPS, uh, the ADI mode or attitude mode, and the opti or optimized mode. Uh, since the Mavic doesn't have the ability to switch between these modes manually, uh, it's really tough to predict how the, the drone's going to react when it switches from mode to mode. Um, GPS mode, uh, as the name would suggest, uh, maintains the GPS position and uses that to help keep the drone stabilized. Uh, if it does have those additional sensors like the Opti mode, uh, it'll use those. The Attitude mode only uses a barometric altitude uh, to maintain position keeping, uh, and that's used when there isn't a GPS or when the, the receiver senses GPS interference. It'll switch to Atti mode. Um, the Opti mode is, uses a front and lower uh, sensors to visually maintain that position keeping, 
but they're only good to about three or four meters above uh, the, the ground. So as it was happening, what could I have done? First of all, I could have uh, gotten out of tripod mode, hit the uh, the X button, and then I would have gotten some of that gain back that I, that the tripod mode takes away from me by being in standard mode. I could have gone from the uh, the switch on the side of the controller to sport mode. That would have increased my, uh, my gain as well and uh, given me the ability to move the uh, drone faster uh, because since it was just slowly drifting as we saw in that movie. Uh, you know, it was a real challenge. Uh, you know, I felt a little helpless as it uh, as it went into the side of the wall. Third of all, I could have killed the motors. I was walking right behind the thing, uh, and if I had killed the motors, I probably could have even caught the drone. As it was, because it hit the side and and, and fell with the motors uh, still running, uh, I didn't dare put my hand in there to catch it, even with my ninja skills. So, you know, there's uh, there's a lot to learn from this, but. Uh, you know, in the future, I think I, what I'll do is minimize the automatic features uh, when I'm doing some of these tight quarters type uh, maneuvers. So there it is. That's my first crash. Um, you know, with like I said, with uh, DJI Care Refresh, I was able to get the thing out. It's already back. It's the 28th of uh, December now. I already have a replacement uh, back in, in the house. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you want to check out my other videos, most of them are on uh, YouTube and there's uh, one or two on uh, Vimeo, uh, check out the link in the uh, comments below. Thanks.